Welcome to section 5 of fungi. This is our fungi overview figure. In this video, we'll be discussing a group of organisms known as the dermatophytes. This includes species belonging to the genera Microsporum, Trichophyton, and Epidermophyton. You can see that we've listed the three genera right here. This scene will take place inside of a dermatologist's office. These two don't get along too well, and so they got in a fight. And you can see one of the dermatologists punching the other one. In any case, dermatologist fighting sounds like dermatophyte. So this will be our symbol for the dermatophytes. As a general rule of thumb, dermatophytes cause infections of the skin, nails, and hair, and are associated with pruritus. With this in mind, let's talk about the three genera and then dive into the clinical subtypes. Because this is a dermatology clinic, we thought it would be appropriate to have a poster on the wall of the epidermis. You can see that it's appropriately labeled epidermis. This sounds like epidermophyton and is here to help you remember that one of the dermatophytes is epidermophyton. Now you can see that we've shown a microscope next to the dermatologist. This is pretty common in a derm clinic because dermatologists often need to examine microscopic samples of tissue to make accurate diagnoses. In any case, the word microscope sounds like microsporum and is here to help you remember that microsporum is another one of the dermatophytes. The last genus you need to be familiar with is trichophyton. To help you remember this, we've shown a tricycle in the office. There must be a little kid in the office that brought this trike along to see the doctors. In any case, tricycle sounds like trichophyton. So trichophyton is another one of the dermatophytes. Now you can see some decorative plants in the office that are unfortunately getting knocked down as a result of these two goobers fighting. Off to the right, you can see that the plant is getting bumped off the table and is right next to the KO sign. Looks like the dermatologist is getting knocked out and simultaneously knocking down this plant. The KO cartoon pop-up is here to help you think of a potassium hydroxide or KOH preparation. The plant with little branches and fruiting bodies on the end should make you think of branching septate hyphae with spores. So putting these two ideas together should help you remember that dermatophyte infections can be diagnosed with a KOH preparation that will reveal branching septate hyphae and possibly spores. This is an image of a dermatophyte. In this image, you can see a few of these features quite well. For example, there are many branches of hyphae right here. You can also see spores on the ends of the hyphae, for example, right here. All right, now let's return to the image and discuss the clinical subtypes. The first patient to the office is this poor guy sitting on the table with his baseball cap in one hand and a net of baseballs in the other hand. This guy is a baseball coach in a hurry and unfortunately has to deal with these two doctors fighting before he can get some help. Anyway, baseball cap sounds like capitis, and should help you remember that this part of the image is about tinea capitis. If you look at his hair, he has several bald spots, which is why he came to the clinic in the first place. These bald spots should help you remember that tinea capitis is associated with alopecia. If you look back at the baseballs, you can see that they're in a net with little beads connecting the threads together. This is one of our recurring symbols and resembles the lymphatic system. We've included it in this image to help you remember that tinea capitis is associated with lymphadenopathy. This guy also brought this kid along to see the doctor, who's off to the side reading a comic book about dragons. He must have been the one that brought that tricycle along. Anyway, if you look at the dragon on the cover of the book, you can see that it has a bunch of prominent scales. And this is here to help you remember that tinea capitis is associated with scaling. This is an image of tinea capitis. As you can see, this occurs on the head and may reveal an area of baldness as well as scaling. All right, now we've shown the next patient waiting to be seen. He has a pretty gnarly tattoo on his belly and likes to get it checked out regularly. Let's zoom up on him so you can see this better. Notice that this guy was in the Marine Corps. We know this because he has a tattoo on his torso that says so. If you look at the words Marine Corps, you may be tempted to mispronounce this as Marine Corps, as many people have done. Anyway, for the sake of this video, I'll pronounce it Marine Corps which sounds like corporis. So this marine corpse tattoo should help you remember that this part of the image is about tinea corporis. Notice that the tattoo is on this veteran's torso. We've intentionally placed it here to help you remember that the lesions associated with tinea corporis are commonly seen on the torso. Next, notice that the tattoo is red with a white center. This is here to help you remember that the rash is characterized by an erythematous scaly ring with a central area of clearing. This is an image of tinea corporis, as you can see, there is an erythematous ring with pustules and some clearing towards the center. Finally, notice that this guy has brought his cat and dogs with him to the clinic. These animals are here to help you remember that tinea corporis can be acquired by infected animals. So, for example, pets and farm animals. All right, if we zoom back out, now you can see that we've added a third patient to the scene. This guy is actually Kevin Durant, as you can tell by his jersey. As hopefully most of you know, he's a pretty famous athlete, and he's in this image to see the doctors about his feet. You can see that he's lifting up his feet to show them, but they're obviously a bit too busy fighting with each other. Anyway, the athlete reference along with the foot should help you remember that this part of the image is about athlete's foot, which is another name for tinea pedis. There are three subtypes of athlete's foot that you need to know for step one. 
The first is the moccasin distribution type. To help you remember this, we've shown Kevin Durant's moccasins off to the side as he shows the doctors his feet. So moccasins for moccasin type tinea pedis. This is an image of the sole of a patient's foot that has moccasin type tinea pedis. As you can see, there is scaling and hyperkeratotic debris along the sole and side of the foot. Next, notice that some of the fruit that got knocked over splattered along the bottom of Kevin Durant's foot. This kind of resembles little erythematous vesicles and is here to help you remember vesiculobolus tinea pedis. This is an image of the vesiculobolus subtype. In this type, the patient can develop vesicles and bolae, which can then rupture, leaving behind open wounds and ulcers. Now, if we zoom up on Kevin Durant, you can see that he has his fingers intertwined, and we've added some NBA champion rings on there to help draw more attention to his fingers. The reference to intertwined digits is here to help you remember interdigital tinea pedis. This is an image showing interdigital tinea pedis. This is the most common type of tinea pedis, and it's characterized by pruritic erythematous lesions between the toes. Oftentimes, you may see scaling, erosions, or fissures, which may cause pain. Okay, moving on, now notice that we've added a guy working on some decor in the office. If you look closely, you can see that he's nailing a picture to the wall. The nails are here to help you think of tinea unguium, which is a fungus that causes infection of the nail. The broad term for fungal nail infections is onychomycosis, and this may be due to dermatophytes, non-dermatophyte molds, or yeasts. This is an image of onychomycosis. As you can see by the green arrow, the nail is discolored due to a fungal infection. Most commonly, this is due to tinea unguium. All right, if we return to the image and take a close look at the picture that the guy is nailing to the wall, you can see that a little girl is getting her swimsuit tugged on by a dog. The swimsuit is stretched out across her inguinal area, which we've depicted this way to help you think of tinea curris. This is also known as jock itch, which is a dermatophyte infection that occurs in the inguinal area. This is an image of tinea curris. As you can see, there is an erythematous patch on the inner thigh of this man right here. All right, let's wrap up this video by discussing treatment. Notice that we've added a special shawl with the letter A on the dermatologist. He graduated AOA in his class and went into derm, so he likes to show off to all of his peers with his AOA status to make everyone else feel inferior to him. In any case, the shawl with an A on it is our recurring symbol for azol medications, and is here to help you remember that most dermatophyte infections should be treated with topical azoles. Now we've shown the worker guy greasing up the window with WD-40 grease. The word grease sounds like griseofulvin. The fact that the grease is next to the nails should help you remember that griseofulvin can be used to treat dermatophyte onychomycosis. Finally, we've intentionally shown this guy wearing a turban to help you think of terbinafine which is another medication that can be used to treat dermatophyte onychomycosis. All right, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A 17-year-old male presents to the physician due to a pruritic rash on his leg that he noticed yesterday. He is on the high school football team and states that he sweats excessively during practices. Physical examination reveals an erythematous scaling patch on the medial aspect of the left inner thigh. Scales are scraped from the lesion and a potassium hydroxide preparation reveals branching septate hyphae. This patient's condition is best treated with which of the following medications? A. Selenium sulfide B. Amphotericin B C. Fluconazole or D. Nystatin Hopefully from the question sem you notice that this patient has tinea curris or jock itch. There are two key points that give this away. First, he has an erythematous scaling patch on the medial aspect of the left inner thigh. This is the classic location and description of jock itch, so this should have immediately come to mind. The second key point is the pathological finding, including branching septate hyphae from a KOH prep. Together, these findings are consistent with tinea curris, so the correct answer is C, fluconazole. From the image, recall that the girl getting her swimsuit ripped apart by the dog right here is here to help you remember that tinea curris affects the inguinal area. Also, the shawl with the letter A on it right here is here to help you remember that most dermatophyte infections can be treated with topical azoles. A is incorrect because this is the treatment for Malassezia furfur. This is a fungus that causes a cutaneous infection characterized by areas of hypopigmentation and hyperpigmentation. However, this is not associated with jock itch, so A is incorrect. B is the treatment for several severe fungal infections, such as systemic histoplasmosis and blastomycosis. However, these would present with much more severe symptoms, such as bone and lung infections. They would not present with an isolated rash on the inner thigh in an otherwise healthy teenager, so B is incorrect. Finally, D is true of infections caused by candida such as oral thrush or vaginal candidiasis, but this is not effective against dermatophyte infections, so D is incorrect. So again, the correct answer is C, fluconazole. And with that, we've covered everything you need to know about the dermatophytes.